Welcome to the Daniel Nickinus Podcast, a podcast for small businesses who are seeking great practical advice about marketing and sales. Danielle thinks like a customer. Even as a little kid, she always has shown deep empathy for others. Dan uses this customer insight to help small businesses create practical marketing strategies that work. Using this customer-centric approach and her 20 years experience in sales and marketing, Dan takes what is in your head, adds her expertise to create a system to assist you make better marketing decisions, attracts a regular stream of ideal customers, and creates a brand that your employees and customers will love. Hope you enjoy this podcast. Hi, everyone, and thanks for listening. Today I've um, copied in an interview I had with Dan Alcon the other week, um, and it's really just about how I apply the simple marketing systems and some, some of the things that I've learned in dealing with small businesses, and I thought that you might find it useful. So thanks, Dan, for the interview, and I'll hand it over to him. Assisting business professionals with funding and relationship marketing solutions. On this show and through my blog, we've discussed different ways to market your company, improve customer service, and retain customers so that your company can effectively compete. Joining us today to talk about how we should focus on attracting the right customers is Australian-based Danielle McGinnis of McGinnis Marketing and The Simple Marketing System a process to attract those ideal clients. Dan is highly sought after strategic marketer. The focus has always been on understanding customer needs and company insights to deliver marketing that works. With over 20 years marketing experience with some of Australia's leading corporate companies, Danielle is recognized as a talented marketer by her peers and the Australian Marketing Institute. Her published articles appear in a variety of mediums, including Australian Women's Mentoring Network, The Customer Collective, and Flying Solo. Welcome, Danielle. How are you today? Oh, good. Thanks, Dan, and thanks for inviting me. Well, we're delighted to have you join us. We should add that uh, we met Danielle by way of social media, and I've been following her blog posts and writings and uh, have for uh, a few months now and trying to get her on our show. And so we're just delighted to make this work today. I'm so intrigued by what your company refers to as the simple marketing system, a system designed and to attract the ideal customer. Um, tell us a little bit about, you know, rather than and, random uh, shotgun acts of marketing, <laughs> what is the simple marketing system? Well, sure, Dan. Um, I guess the system for me was built out of the need of dealing with small businesses that, look, even even myself would do, um, you know, would try one one thing to attract customers and then perhaps that didn't work and try something else. And I think that that's really been born out of the fact that, you know, when we take on a role as a small business, we're, we're doing, you know, 3,000 jobs at once. <laughs> and I guess that sometimes that marketing or sales engine to attract people to our businesses sometimes takes the back seat. Um, the businesses that I deal with often start their business out of um, out of an expression of or passion or interest or something that they're just really good at. And... Well, mm -hmm. like, yeah, and I think that while they sort of understand that, you know, customers is the lifeline of that business, I don't think that they necessarily plan out how they're going to do their marketing and sales. And so it sort of just ends up being this mosh pit of um, ideas and things that they might try. And so, you know, even when I left corporate um, marketing role, me too, you know, would be you know, okay, well, I need a website and I need other things, but I don't think I systematically planned it. And so really over the last couple of years, I've built this system really based on walking customers through this experience that they have with me. And, and what I've found is that the process is the same for most companies. It's about trying to attract the right customer to their business, and that's step one, all the way right. through 
all the way through this process of, you know, educating them, um, building that connection, and now with social media, that's even more important, to generating real leads that meet um, the business requirement or, or what you're trying to do, all the way through to trying to keep those customers as referrals. And there is a process by which, um, you know, businesses can do this in a systematic way. Well, how does a business, Danielle, how does a business identify its ideal customer? I mean, are not all customers alike, especially when you're prospecting. It's hard to define which one is the ideal. How, how do you help your clients focus on what an ideal customer will look like? Yeah, and great question because it's really hard to do this when you start a small business because, you know, you, you don't want to say no. In fact, that's the hardest thing that small businesses find is to just, you know, say that that customer isn't right for me. So the way that I do that with customers that I deal with is to actually sit down and profile what that ideal customer looks like. And, and we go through an ideal customer sheet which says, well, let's sit down as an osteo, what is the main customer complaint that's coming in to see you, for example? And one client that I had found that really back pain was the main thing. I mean, he could solve lots of other problems, but chronic back pain was something that he wanted to be known for. So instead of trying to position his business to every sort of osteo complaint, he really needed to narrow it down to just those people that were specifically suffering chronic back pain and and by doing that sure he you know he did cut off um, some of the other potential customers that he might have attracted but he was much more effective in being known for that one problem that he solved and and the other thing Dan is you know he could he could tailor the budget that he had just to that market um, and thereby sort of you know build on that expertise so one of the things is identifying the key problem that you solve for your for your individual target market and the other thing is to profile them in depth what do they look like you know where do they live mm -hmm. all of those sorts of questions are important to address so rather than trying to be all things to all people your focus is to encourage these business owners to target specifically those customers that are most profitable for their business. Yeah, yeah, correct? yeah. yeah and make it a conscious decision. I, I mean, look, I'll give you me as an example. You know, a small business isn't isn't a small niche. It's a big niche. But within that niche, I have focused my services just to the service-based business. My customers generally have two to three years in their own business, and it's normally a professional services business. Um, you know, they're turning over mm -hmm. 100,000. Um, they have staff. Um, they're, they're just doing too many things to keep this sales and marketing engine going. And so when I get the customers that have, you know, it's just they're just a solo entrepreneur and they don't fit that bill, well, look, I can still manage that customer, but I, I tend to, you know, use another service for them. So my soul or my bread and butter really come from focusing just on one niche and so you don't have to let go of all the other business that you service but I think when it comes to marketing and lead generation you need to be talking to that one customer so that when they come across your website or if they meet you they say yes you're for me you're talking about my problems and 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 you can't do that if you're vanilla yeah yeah. We're talking today with Danielle McInnes from McInnes Marketing in Australia. Uh, I noticed in some of your material that I've read over, you refer to something called a marketing mud map, M-U-D. Uh, what is a marketing mud map and how does it work into the service that you provide to business owners? Yeah, sure. Well, a marketing mud map is basically just sketching out um, the process by which you know, we communicate with our customers. It's actually what I use to walk through the services that that I go through. 
So generally with small businesses, where I start is your business strategy. I mean, why did you get into business in the first place? And what is that mm-hmm. business model that's going to allow you to make money? Um, and, and, you know, it seems like a simple question, Dan, but so many people, you know, they've got into business for their passion. They haven't generally thought really seriously about that business model of how they make money and so actually going back and looking at that business strategies is sort of step one of the business of the mud map step two often is really going back and asking some questions and getting some insight from your customers because you might know what or think you know you might think you know what you're really good at but it's so surprising when you get that feedback from your customers and what they believe adds really a lot of value to them isn't the thing that you're focusing on so it's going back and getting some insights and then building your brand and your identity online and and then creating those little bite-sized pieces that give them a taste of your service before they're ready to buy in sales and marketing tools. And so all of that together I forms see. a strategy. I I hear you referring to the the business owner's story, their authentic story and what motivated them to start their business in the first place. Um that personalization, that branding seems to be more important now than uh, ever in my business career. How important is the personal story and the passion for starting that, that business in the, um, the simple marketing system? Look, I just believe it's critical, Dan. I, I think that we've, we've just got access to so much information at the moment and really the buying is in our hands as a consumer. And, and so when you're trying to decipher um, information and um, find out information about companies that you're dealing with, you can really go down to that individual level now. And the funny thing is people do. I mean, when I'm talking to people, I'm sure that they're Googling me afterwards and looking for that confirmation that, yes, this is a person I want to be dealing with. And so being able to profile yourself as that business owner is important. And being able to, um, I guess, sort of almost separate yourself from the pack by, I believe, the values that you hold and how you do business is as important as what you do. And so your story or the About Us page or information about your team it is something that you want to have visible and it's something that you want to control and have and be purposeful about. So, you know, if you, if, if you went and asked um, people, you know, look, after you've met someone, do you go and Google them or do you go and look them up? I, I would say most people are doing that now. So controlling that story and being um, purposeful about it, I believe, is a really key point that small businesses can do really effectively. In, uh, in Danielle, in today's um, online and, and social media marketing strategies, I noticed also that you use a phrase, giving your prospects a taste of you. you know, as you know, most consumers and business owners choose to do business with those that they know, like, trust, and I've heard try. Mm. Um, and now you say, give your prospects a taste of you. Some ideas and and some um, um, tactics that you have found effective for business owners to give a taste of their business of their product or service to to customers or prospects, I guess. Yeah, sure. What have you found as well? Yeah, sure. Well, look, you know, products have been doing this forever with sampling, and I think as services, we're just starting to catch up to this mentality of, you know, not everyone's ready to buy when you engage with them, but they're certainly ready to hear a little bit more. And so, how do we do this? Mm -hmm. And, you know, look, social media is fantastic application for that because look here we are talking on the radio now people are going to get a sense about both you and I and you know maybe check it, us out online um, look at our blog you know get, get a sense for who we are um, so, so that's one way of actually engaging in social media the other way is that when people come to your website I think that being able to have some call to action is important and look as much as we want to collect email addresses and things, putting people through lots of 
hoops isn't a great idea. I mean, I give away as much as I possibly can for free because I know that people will still need to implement things. And I listened to Gary Vanderchuk on a show last night and, I mean, he's all over this in terms of sampling that, you know, think about what your customers would find extremely valuable and give that away. So for me, you know, a 15-minute complimentary coaching session I'm sure that a lot of small businesses will get a lot of value out of that but if you're a mortgage broker you know maybe it is some sort of calculation sheet that helps people budget or you know if you're um, you know, like my husband an architect maybe it is a checklist of what to talk about with your architect before you meet you know what do you actually have to have ready uh, so, so there's lots of information is Right, an information um, gift is just like a, a tangible gift. When you mentioned uh, a complimentary engagement, you're uh, you're in Australia, but you service clients around the globe. And I remember you telling me how um, how would a listener today engage with you or contact you through your blog? Is that the yeah the sure. preferred manner? Yeah, sure. Look, um, my blog is Danielle Mackinnis, it's M-A-C-I-N-N-I-S dot com. So they can go there or visit my website, which is mckinnismarketing.com.au. And look, Dan, I've got a lot of free stuff on there. There's, I've just finished doing a how-to webinar series for small businesses that, look, they just don't know how to put up Google Analytics. So, um, so it gives them a five little tip and runs them through on screen. And again, I'm not packaging this up and trying to, you know, create a silver bullet that, system. It's, it's just tips that help them on their way to creating you know what they need to do and the other thing that I would suggest is there's so many applications out there for small businesses that you know it would be a good idea to to check out some applications that help them do what they need to do really quickly and I'm happy to forward on a link to you um, of a PDF of I think there's around 70 applications for small businesses marketing and sales that perhaps you can add on to the end of this podcast Excellent. that'd be great You'll send that link to me and I'll post it on my blog. That'd be great. Okay, awesome. We'll also include um, your Twitter uh, handle as well. And as we come down to our last minute today, I'd like to thank Danielle for joining us. It was a real pleasure to have you. We look forward to having you back again sometime. Can you join us again someday? Oh, I'd love to, Dan. Thanks for inviting me and I've, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Well, we will certainly uh, have you back. Also, as a reminder to listeners, a summary and link to the MP3 recording of this interview will be posted later at dgalcorn.com. Now, while on the site, you can sign up for blog postings by email and receive future Blog Talk Radio posts. Uh, we'll include the link to Danielle's uh, blog, that's daniellemcginnis.com as well as her website, mckinnismarketing.com.au, as uh, well as her Twitter handle. Until next time, my special thanks for listening. This is Dan Alcorn. Let's make it a great day. Bye. Hey, thanks for taking the time out of your busy day to listen to this podcast. For more great marketing tips, go to Dan's blog at www.daniellemcginnis.com and sign up for her marketing tips or visit her website at www.mcginnismarketing.com.au. Catch you next time.